everyone, welcome to part two of the Halloween journal series. Uh, we are going to be doing page two now uh, in this tutorial. So we finished up the cover and page one in the first one. And now we have moved on to page two, and this is the page we're going to be doing next. So I'm going to walk you through these watercolor tutorials and show you exactly how to put those together. But I wanna show you what dies you're gonna need um, to complete these pages. And we're gonna assemble this at the end of the tutorial. So of course you're gonna need the paper. This is the Halloween paper pack 5605. This is available on our website. And that is exclusively what I'm using in this, um, in this project. So in addition, the little bats are from the uh, Halloween. This is from the new Halloween die set. And uh, there are two sizes of these little bats. They're so cute, little spiders too, little ghosts, lots of really fun things that are in this tutorial, that are in that set. So that's these two little bats. Um, the little trick or treat sign. Now, if you have this little front porch series and you've got the Halloween one, there's a little sign in here and I just stole it from this, um, this little set. So it's totally optional. Uh, I just added it here because I thought it was just so cute. There are also other things you could steal from this set too that would be so cute in your journal. But I took that little sign and added it to this. So that is where that is from. Uh, the little boo, the little letters, is from this set. This is um, 5562, the journal letter die set, creates this little boo right here. And then, uh, of course, in your journal, you will need the page and you will need the accent page. So these two from the original die set. And then uh, this little decorative, this little decorative die right here is what cuts out this little scallop on both sides of the journal. And that is it for this page. We're gonna go ahead and get started now on the watercolor tutorial. Okay, so I went ahead and pre-stamped my, um, my projects. So there'll be two in this part. And uh, one of them is this border and you can see I've pre-stamped my little pumpkins and the other one is this little doorway and I've pre-stamped that one. So let me show you what else we're gonna need um, to complete this next step. So this is Harvest Set, Harvest Set 5598, and we're going to be using this little hay bale right here uh, in the door and stocking set. Now this is from the Christmas Journal, 5574. We're gonna be using the door, which is so versatile. You can use it for just any season. Um, in the Watercolor Harvest Set, we're gonna use the two pumpkins right here and the little grass. And then in the uh, branches set, we're gonna be using this one right here, little branch. Uh, in the flower set, 4052, we're going to be using the little filler flower. And in this one, in Bible journaling set two, we're going to be using this uh, little leaf, this leafy branch, uh, the right and the left. And then in foliage set four, we're going to be using these um, accent grasses and this little foliage right here. So we've got a lot that we're going to be using, and uh, let's get going on our project. So let's start out with um, the little border. This little guy right here. This is going to go into uh, the second page of our journal. So we're gonna start out just by pulling that color out of the line. So that's always the first step is to just kind of start with that. And I think I will actually, uh, this watercolor paper is a little small. So I think I will just tack it down just like that. Maybe just not quite that far. And there we go. Yeah, I'll just bring it down here. And I'm going to uh, zoom in so you can see, and now I need to move it again. <laughs> okay, there we go. I think we're set, you guys. Okay, um, let's get going on this one. I'm gonna start out, like I said, by pulling the color out of the lines, just dragging this out, and I pre-stamped this using uh, just the dark brown. So for those of you who would like to know, that's 969 the dark brown, and then I stamped it off um, at least twice. So depending on how light you want yours, um, stamp it off at least one time so it's not too dark. We don't get too much color on it. Okay, that's the first step. So let's go ahead and add some color to it, and we're going to uh, do that with the orange. So this is the 933 orange. And I'm just going to dip my brush again in water, pinch it off, <clears throat> always pinch it off, and uh, just add the color just like this. So to the sides, where the color would be the darkest, and then this little area that is kind of raised up here, that needs to have a highlight. 
So darker on the sides. Always when you have an image that's, you know, rounded like this one, we're going to have this uh, be darker on the sides always. And then be sure to show that highlight in the center. And you can go back over it again. You can add more color to it, make that pumpkin just a little darker if you want to, but you're gonna do it the same exact way. You just wanna make sure that this area here is lighter than the sides. That's really all you have to remember is that the center of the image has to be the lightest area. Okay, that looks good. So I'm gonna take my twin tone now and my brown and I'm just gonna darken these little stems here. Just kind of follow the lines. You can see the shape of it. Just kind of follow those lines and then just color that in. And then we might as well just make our little faces on here. Three little triangles. This guy's kind of tipped a little bit, so I'm gonna make him that way. And then our little smiley faces. And just color that all in solid because we're going to come back in and you know the fun part add the teeth this little guy he's going to have a big smile you know they're just so happy my pumpkins my jack-o-lanterns are always so happy okay there we go so we're good to go on that one <clears throat> So let's do the next step, and we're going to add some of uh, this orange with this little floral. So this is the little daisy bunch, and we're just going to kind of put this in mostly for a background and for color. And you can just, you know, put as much of this in as you want to. You know, these turn out different every time you do them, but they're so fun. And they're really great for the journal because they're a really great page filler. And they don't take a lot. They only take a few stamps and they just add so much. And you can make them into a little pocket, you know, a little um, vertical pocket in your journal. It'd be so cute. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to add <clears throat> a little blue to it and that is the 565. So we're gonna add that to the palette. And just add a little of this blue lightly, just really lightly. Just add some of this into the background. And that's really, you know, what we're doing is just adding this color into the background, just creating a background for our little border. And just kind of brush it in, you know, a little bit, kind of wherever you want it. Don't overthink it and really try not to overdo it. Just try not to put too much in. Okay, that looks good. <clears throat> so let's go ahead now with our little branch, this guy. And we're going to use the dark brown, so the 969. And we're just going to just kind of put this in, you know, wherever we want. And I'm just going to turn this one. Oops, get a little more in there like that. And it's okay to stamp them over the pumpkin. That's totally fine to do that. We don't mind that a bit. And now let's add uh, some of this foliage here. And we're gonna do it with the green, so the light green, the 98. Just a little bit here, and uh, let's put some over here. And then I may just turn my paper And do some this direction. Okay, back around. There we go. And now I'm going to uh, add some water to this now. Just kind of blend it out a little bit. Just really softly. Just softly. We don't want to lose too much of this detail, so... Just, you know, kind of touch these little leaves, just really simply. And then we're going to now ink this in the dark brown. So that is the uh, 969. We're just gonna come right back in here now 
with this dark. And just put this kind of in wherever. Maybe a little bit over here. And maybe some going this direction. And then let's just add some water again. Just a little bit. And I think I'm going to add just a, a little more of these uh, branches because I feel like I, I just kind of lost them a little bit in here. And I love how these little branches look. So let's just do this again. Oops. Add this one down like that. And maybe we just put one over here too. All right, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> so now I'm going to uh, just add, um, I'm gonna just add a little water to this and just kind of blend it out a bit. And you can pull this, you know, kind of this green and brown out into your background as well. Just like that starting to take shape and now I'm going to come in with my orange so this is my 933 and I'm just going to make some little orange kind of little seeds or dots and it just kind of adds a little more texture and interest put these in you know groups of you know three or four or five Like so and then let's add just a few little webs in here I just feel like we need to do that so remember your anchor point and then pull these little you know stretch these little um, areas of your web like they're all pulling towards that anchor and then maybe this one and it's pulling this way so we want to go down like this and these don't have to be perfect. Obviously, look at mine. They don't have to be perfect. And maybe just maybe one more little one here. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. So uh, let's get our white paint out. And we're going to add some little teeth to our pumpkins. And we're just gonna add just some little white teeth in here. It just kind of brightens up everything. It's my favorite part, you guys, if you haven't noticed that already. This is my favorite part. adding these little teeth in. And just use your tiny brush, just use the tiniest brush that you have and just barely dip it in here. And then just put a tiny, tiny little highlight uh, in their eye, just kind of down in the corner. And then, you know, you can just add a little highlight too. And I'm just taking my taking the white out of here just with my tiny brush. And then I'm gonna add just a few little white dots in here. Just to kind of brighten it up. And it just really does. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think we are good. And oh, looking at my web here, it looks like I've got my, <laughs> my web is backwards, but you know what? It's okay. It's totally fine. We aren't gonna worry about it. I've got my webs. You see how this is the anchor point here? So it should be pulling the opposite direction as I have it here. Cause this looks like it's pulling from this direction not this direction but 
Who will ever notice? Okay, you guys, and that is it for this. This little guy is done. That was so quick and easy, wasn't it? So fun. Oops, I got a sign. Never forget to sign, even if it's just a little border. Never forget to sign. How cute is that? Okay, let's go on to the next one, and that is the door. We're going to do this little door, and I've also pre-stamped that. So this is stamped in two colors again, the 565 and the 969, stamped off twice, and then stamped onto the original canvas. So we're going to now dip our brush in water, pinch it off, and then pull the color um, out of the lines. Just kind of work your way down. Inside, it, this will be inside the line, so I'm pulling the color to the inside of the lines since this window is kind of inset. There we go. Got the little lamp. And it is starting to look three-dimensional. So I'm pulling this now to the outside because um, the door obviously is attached to a wall. So we don't want it to look like it's floating. So we want to pull some of that color out to the outside. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So um, let's start out with, um, let's start out by adding our little um, hay bale in here. So this little guy, and I'm just going to ink it with two colors. I'm going to ink it with a warm brown. And I'm going to ink it with the dark brown. And then I'm going to stamp it off just on a piece of scrap, scrap watercolor paper. I'm just going to stamp it off here and then stamp it onto my, um, onto my little doorway. And I think I can just put it right here. Perfect. And then on top of this little guy, we're going to put a little um, pumpkin. And I'm going to use my positioner for this one because um, this one is rubber and I can't see through it. So I want to make sure that I get it in the right place. And so I'm going to ink this just with the dark brown. Stamp this into the corner just like that and stamp it onto um, my little hay bale. And I'm going to turn it a little bit just to kind of add a little interest up on it. And then just stamp that on there. And then I'm going to stamp the little bigger one. So that was the small one. There are two that are in that set. One's the little one. That's one, the one I stamped up here. And then the larger one that's down here. So I'm just going to ink this one now. And stamp it off. And I think I already have it on my, I already have it on my positioner. I do. So I'm just going to put it right here. But, I, but first I'm going to stamp it off because it's just going to be too dark. And then huff on it. And then put it right in there. So I've got my little pumpkins now. My little hay bale. So we're all good to go there. And I'm going to add some color now to my pumpkins and to my hay bale. So first we're going to pull the colors out of the lines. Like so. And then we're gonna pull some of this color out. It's kind of in the shadows back here, so that's gonna be a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna add some yellow to my palette so that I can add some color now to this little guy. So stay in each section. Just adding some yellow and then we'll just maybe we'll put a little orange in here a uh, darker down in here where this you know this twine meets that's gonna be really dark in there because it's kind of it's pulling together it's pulling together so we want to make sure that that area is the darkest and then out here as it kind of comes out to the edge that's the lightest area 
And we'll, we'll kind of come back to that little hay bale. So let's add some orange now. We, are, we know how to do the pumpkins now, you guys. We've done so many pumpkins already and lots more to come. So you'll be able to do pumpkins in your sleep. So adding that orange and leaving that highlight. So adding it to the outside and then pulling that color in, tipping your brush off and then just pulling that color to the center. So we've got that highlight. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm gonna make the, um, do the little stems here. Darken these all up. Just follow the lines and then just add some more lines in here and you know, you can make it a little decorative if you want to. That, that changes it up so that it doesn't look exactly the same. Here we go. So I'm gonna darken this little twine kind of right here in the center and then just a little V here where that's pulling in. So you can see that that's pulling the twine in. And it looks like that's really tight there. So now I'm gonna add some warm brown and just add a little more color to this because this is kind of, you know, back here in the side. And then at the top too, this is gonna to be a little darker up here. Okay, so let's put our little faces on here. You're gonna get really good at these too. Triangles and smileys. Three little triangles and then our little smiley faces. And just color them in solid. And this little guy, so cute. Okay, that's looking good. I'm just gonna add a little more color to the little pumpkin. I feel like he just, he needs to be just a little darker on the side. And there we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now let's move on to the door and we're going to do the door. We're gonna add some blue now to the palette and some purple. This is the um, 636. And I'm gonna just do that, do the little windows, these little windows here. And just brush in this color. And then just a little darker along the edge. Along the edge of that window, those little window panes. And then let's just color in this little doorway, this little door plate. Even at the section small, you still want to um, stay in each section. Okay, so now let's add some brown to our palette and a little, a little more warm brown. And let's just add some color to this door. And make sure it's, you know, you got enough water on here. Make sure we got enough water and then just brush it in. Well, it's kind of an old, you know, more of a rustic door, so it's better if it's not colored perfectly. 
you know, maybe the paint's kind of, you know, peeling and just weathered and old. And we're going to add some detail to it too. brush this all in just like this and we might as well just do this this little light here too it's done and that looks good so now we can add our foliage and everything else that we're putting onto the door so before we do that I'm just going to add a little bit more of this color um, to the side, you know, where the wall is. Just a little bit, just to kind of give us the impression that this is, you know, a wall here. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this and I'm going to get my ruler and my pencil and I'm going to just add some detail to it. And using my pencil, I'm just going to draw some lines just coming up the door, just some board lines. Pencils are just the best for stuff like this. Okay, so we've got our detail in there. And now let's take our, um, our twin tone and finish up the details here. So I'm going to just make some little holes here in the door plate and then just make a little darker edge here and then down here in the bottom where where we've created these little um, these little lines we can just make a few little breaks in the wood and the same up here so you can it can actually look like this door is really kind of old you don't have to do all the lines, but just a few. And then here's our little hinges we can put in. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, so let's go on now and let's put something kind of growing up over the side and we're going to use our little branches for that this one and the dark brown and we're just going to kind of work our way you know up here like this just kind of some dried branches this used to be a kind of a nice vine probably growing up this door and now it's just all dried up and then let's put um Let's use this little branch and put in some little leaves and maybe we'll use the, the light brown. So this is the warm brown, the 947. So we're just gonna put in just a few of these little branches. Kind of just coming up like this. some water to that just kind of touch it you know it's it's all very sparse because you know it's October and the leaves have all fallen and um, everything is pretty sparse in here so I want anything too lush looking and then let's add um, some grasses some of those little accent grasses so let me find those here these little guys and we're gonna just put some of this in and maybe we'll just use some of this green and we'll just add some more in here Kind of some grass growing in there. 
And then let's add our larger foliage here. And I think we could just use maybe some more of this green. And maybe just a little something growing up over here too. And just add some color to it. And let's put in our little grasses down at the bottom. So this little guy. And we're just going to use this brown again, the dark brown. And just put some of this in and some of this. And let's use our warm brown now. And just put some of these accents in. You know, these all, every time you do these, they're going to turn out different. And this one has certainly turned out different than the one I did before. But they're just, this is what happens when we do them. Because they're, this is why they're, you know, so, um, this is why they're so neat. Is because they're so different. You know, and every time you do it, it's going to be different. now to our grasses and we can make a little um, a little stone path here just with some black and maybe a little brown and you just kind of mix this mix this together and add some water and you could just make some little why don't we make some little stones here like a little stone path Just going to freehand it and then I'm going to add a shadow up here definitely need a shadow in the doorway and then under here and up in here And let's add some more of this, these little branches. Whoops. There we go. Now let's put in, uh, let's put in some webs. Let's put in some webs here. So here's our anchor point. And we're just gonna pull these lines out. Maybe we got one coming up here and down here. So you want to, you just want to have a really fine tip um, when you're doing these. And always remember to curve, curve it, curve them as you're com they're coming to the anchor point. And let's have another one up here. go and maybe just feel like we just need one more here that looks pretty good just darken all of these a little bit more and then you know set this door back into back into the opening here a little bit just by making these darker these lines a little darker and i'm just going to add a little more of this olive green kind of to the the little doorway here or to the wall And 
then let's add some little brown, like little dried up buds or seeds or something that would be dried up on the vines. You can add some in here too. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just gonna darken these windows just a little bit more, these little window panes. And there is our little spooky door. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's get our white paint out and do our little teeth. Get these little guys' smiles put in. And let's put just some little white areas in. Put a little highlight on that. On that little light, some little highlights on our pumpkins and our stems. is the funnest part putting in the final kind of the final touches put a little highlight on this door here and then little highlights on the windows okay and this part two is finished. Part two is finished, you guys. So stay tuned and um, I'll see you in part five, part three. So let me sign a date and this one will be officially finished. There we go. Okay, so I've trimmed up my art and uh, cut my accent pages and the things that are gonna be going into the second page of the journal. So let me tell you what the sizes um, that I've cut my art into. Um, and then you can add the decorative trim onto it. So what I do is I cut the triangle or the rectangle first, and then I just place the die right along the edge. So I'm measuring right from the edge of this. This is about two and a half, two and a half inches wide by uh, three and three quarters inches long. And that is just about the perfect size. So cut that as a rectangle and then just run your decorative, decorative die. Dra <laughs> Sorry, you guys, run your decorative die right along the edge, just flush with, your, um, with the rectangle. And that's the easiest way. Same with the border. I do the same thing. I just create the rectangle and it would be one and a half by uh, four and an eighth. And that is the length of this one. <clears throat> this one, I cut out uh, using my uh, my accent paper die, and I just trimmed off the back side. And it is this one is uh, about two inches by uh, four and an eighth. So four and an eighth. And then the, of course, the accent papers they um, they cut out with the die. So we are ready to assemble page two now in our journal. So let me bring it over. This is where we ended up uh, after the first page. So I'm gonna flip this over now. 
and I'm going to uh, glue on my accent paper and do this first. And then I've got another page cut out. So this one right here, this is gonna go right behind it. So I'm going to add another one of these little accent sheets. And so I'm just gonna glue this one right down on this page. And these pages will be facing each other. So they're gonna go in your journal just like this. So here is the one that backs up to that little scarecrow. <clears throat> and this is the one that has the border on it. So we're gonna just start out by gluing this down uh, just right in here and it will just be flush right with this little accent paper because we use that same die. So I'm just gonna glue this one now. And just, I'm going to just leave a little bit of an edge. Now that's up to you too. I kind of like to see that little um, decorative edge on there. So you can, uh, you can bring it all the way over if you want to. That's totally up to you. Now this one, I'm also going to do that. And I'm going to glue this in. But you can leave this open. So I'm just going to glue this edge here and leave this open as a little pocket. Because so I think that would be really cute. You could tuck a little note in there. Something a little decorative. So I'm just gonna do the edge. You could also do that with this, um, this orange paper too. And this is just going to go in here just like this. So cute. And then our little, um, our little word, boo, that's going to go right in here. So I'm just gonna add a little glue to this. Just a tiny bit, it doesn't take much with these little letters. So just a little dab will do it. And I just put boo in here, but you know, again, uh, it's your journal and you can just change it up however you would like to. This is just kind of a an inspiration one for you so that you can uh, be inspired and then, you know, just go on your own too. And maybe make it personal for somebody. So I just thought the word boo was so cute. And you could, you know, you could do more, more O's on here too. So when I, when I cut these letters out, um, let me just give you a little tip on that because um, I found, I find that leaving them all connected works best. Um, you don't, you're not looking for these little letters and trying to line them up on your paper. And honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't waste that much paper. So when I need the word boo, I run this whole thing through and then I get the B and I get the O and then I place it on my paper. You know, for example, this is the paper. I might just place it like right about here, like this on my paper and just run this section of my dies. Do you see what I mean? And then everything stays intact. Uh, because I do have a set that I broke apart and it is just uh, trying to find the letters is about impossible. And, you know, you can see right where they are on here because you can see the alphabet. So it really, it's really handy to do that. I mean, you know, it's just a little tip that I've learned uh, just by playing with these little letters. And I think it works really good. Um, okay, so we've got this little page. I'm going to let that dry just for a little bit while we do the next one. And this is the page that is going to be next to it in the journal. Uh, this one, did I already tell you this dimensions? I think I did, but let me tell you again. So two and a half by um, three and three quarters. And then again, just cut it in a rectangle and then do your little decorative edge, you know, on the side after you get that, um, that rectangle cut and then you'll have it the perfect size. You could do that with this too. You could leave any of these open on the side as a pocket. So just keep that in mind too. There are so many ideas with these, you know, and every time I put one together, I think of a new idea. So it just makes it so fun. Uh, okay, so I I found this one in, um, in the little doorway set, I told you guys, and I'm going to use this in my uh, journal just because I think it's so cute. So I, and that's where I got the, the bats too. So I'm just going to put this little foam dot on here and then add just a little tiny bit of glue just to the handle here. 
just so it looks like it's kind of attached um, to the door and just maybe hold that in place just for a second. Let's see if I can get that to stick. Yep. There we go. So we've got a cute little sign in here. I think that adds a ton. And then of course my little bats. And I think uh, if you guys, <laughs> remember when I made this little web and I made it backwards? So it should be, these little arch arcs should be going the other direction. So I'm just, you know what, I'm gonna cover it up with a little bat and I'll never have to see it again. There we go, done. That little bat is just gonna cover that right, <laughs> right up. <laughs> there are always ways to cover your mistakes, you know? Just, you know, put something over the top. A spider or a bat in your journal will do the trick. So here's another one. And this guy we might just put right over here. So I'm gonna let those dry just for a second. And then uh, I'm going to put this, this little page into the journal. And it's going to fold this way. Now, this is really important, you guys. When you go to glue your pages in, you need to be able to see the lip. So don't tuck it around behind like this and put it in. Don't do that. You need to be able to see the lip like this. So the lip is going to go right along that score line. So just like this. And the reason is because we need to have enough space in between these two pages that we can put things like a pocket in and it's not too tight in there. So that is the whole science behind it. So always be sure that you see that, um, that lip. And then I'm going to just glue my page in, just right along the score line, just right next to it. And this also, I would recommend that you use glue, not adhesive tape. It just doesn't, um, not the tape that I have anyway. So maybe you have some ultra strong adhesive tape that's gonna just work great. But um, what I have does not hold up like glue does. And this also, this glue dries really quickly. So there we go, we've got our first page and we've got our second page now. And I'm gonna hold this one out until we do the third page and then we'll be gluing this one in. So we are on to part three, stay tuned and thanks so much for watching.